Hello guys, bit of a different video for you today. Um, a lot of people have asked to see the Jeep, so I thought I'd do a quick video about the Jeep and what I'm basically doing with it. So we're out in the garage for a change, we're not in the uh, in the modern room, and uh, if I turn around you'll see behind me there is the Jeep tub stood on its back. So let's have a quick look at that. And there it is, this is the, the tub of the Jeep stood on its back end. You can see I've got one of the railings from the garden here I'm doing. But it's, uh, as you can see, it's in pieces. So there's the tub. There's one of my combat rims over there. You can see, not bad condition, that one. Uh, I think the rear rim needs replacing, but the, the, the outer facing rim seems okay. And then I've got another one over here. You see there's another combat rim there. And when we look at the Bronco model, you'll see what I mean about how I think the wheels don't look deep enough. If you look how deep that rim is. And then down here beyond, we've got the axles which have been built for a couple of years now but um, they're all done there's a brand new diff in one of those and everything but what I want to talk about today is this this is the engine block this is actually a CJ engine block uh, is what was in the Jeep um, it's not original but it's a lot less likely to crack they um, they often crack here down below the distributor but this this one's um, beefed up in that area so this is actually um, October 48 block so it's um it's almost period you know not not far out but um what we're going to do today is get the rust out of it look down here we can see in there it's like um like going into a cave it's uh it's bad <laughs> it's quite crusty and it needs um it needs some serious rusting so you can see there so it's, uh, it's quite corroded. So if we look in here, we can see in the, uh, in the water jackets in the sides there where I've got the core plugs out. Not good. Not good at all. And here where you've got the drain plug, there's a lump of something stuck in there. So um, how am I going to do this? Well, I watched a video uh, on YouTube and a, a guy um, who, I think his name is Blue Dot 519 or something. I've, 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 I'll put a, a name across it. He's um, he's actually got a GP, well he sold his GPW now and he's actually uh, rebuilding a, well not rebuilding, he's building a Willis from parts. Um, quite interesting video so go and have a look. He's uh, quite local to me, he's a guy in Cheddar. So um, so there we go. So how am I going to get rid of this, uh, this rust? Well I saw him do a video and I started looking into it and what I discovered was in his video he uses sorts of chemicals and stuff and, and power. And um, I looked a bit deeper and I discovered that you can just use salt. So I've been experimenting and I'll do this video in real time so you can see what's going on. But look at this. Now I, I removed all the sludge from the top of here about 10 minutes ago. And you can see how the sludge is built up. It's quite disgusting. But this is the um, cylinder head off of that block. And I've used this as an experiment because if this gets scrapped I don't really mind. I'd rather not but if it does get scrapped it's um it's not as important as losing the block um and, and it seems to work a treat so what i'm going to do now i've got this great big water thing and then over here i've got my engine crane so what i'm going to do is suspend that block with that engine crane in that tank and connect up those electrics to it so let's see how we get on okay so we've got the uh the engine on the stand now jess is playing ball um, as you can see, I'm using this thing. This is a machine mark, a Klong, Clark Strong. I'm not sure what it's actually called, but it's um, it's a it's a basically lifting thing, and it's got handles so you can move the pivot left and right, so you can get your angle of the engine block like this correct. Uh, you can see I've got a spirit level on there, and you can also use in the the nuts on these um, on these arms here. You can get the level that way as well. So uh, you can see it's. Uh, it's all level and true so I want it to sit in there so make sure that the water is up to the same level everywhere so we've got our, um, our water tank over there and uh, there's our little favorite toy car there all the way from America same as this one um, <clears throat> so um, yeah I'm gonna have to put a couple of blocks of wood in the bottom of here because if this loses hydraulic capacity overnight that uh, drops then these parts here this and this will break the um, We'll break the plastic box it's not quite deep enough so i'll put a couple of blocks of wood in the bottom just in case 
so they'll be uh, saturated in um, salty water when they're finished. So uh, I'll get this over the um, box now and we'll go from there. Okay, so I'm going to just lower it down in now and uh, got the wooden box in the bottom to catch it just in case the hydraulics give out overnight. This will probably be in here for a couple of days. So there we go. So that's down in like that now. I'm just going to lift it up a bit and then I'm going to put a piece of wood, jam a piece of wood in here. So that's all in place now. So um, now it's time to fill it up with water. Okay, so that's full of water now, and what I'm going to do now is just put some of these dishwasher salt granules in there. And then I'll mix that with it nicely. So I can see that of course the wood's going to float, isn't it? So the wood's all moving around now. So, let's just have a look. So, uh, yeah, let's let that fill up and then we'll go from there. Okay, so... I've now filled up the water, well it's about three inches from the top as you can see. I've put the salt in as you saw. Um, I've now got the um, the connections done for the battery charger. Here's the battery charger here. It's just an ordinary Halfords battery charger for over 1800s. Um, got it on normal, not on fast. Don't want to overdo it and sort of destroy the battery charger. We can see here I've got the positive on the anode which is just a piece of steel. I've got it clamped to the side of the box, I don't want it to touch. Um, and then I've got a um, the negative here on the actual on a bolt on the block. So let's switch it on and watch what happens, if anything. It'll probably take a little while to start, but you should see pretty much straight away you should see it start to fizz. Here we go. It is fizzing already. If you can see that there. So what's happening is all the bare metal surfaces will fizz and what this will do is actually dissolve the rust. Now right now I can hear the radio is on and if you listen you will hear it. That's the news so that's 5 p.m. so that's a good starting point. So we'll come back at 6 p.m. and see what's happening. Okay so if you listen you can hear the news. That's the six o'clock news so it's been an hour. We can see now I've got a piece of wood in there to uh, support the ram should it start to fall during the night. But I really don't want that to sit on the bottom of that plastic box because I think it might crack it. Which is why I've got it right in the front of the garage so that if it does crack and break it or just the water will run away. Um, and I've got the battery charger in a plastic box there so if there is any water spilled then that's not going to get in contact. So we can see here that the something's happening. Uh, what I've done I've added a couple of G clamps one here, one over there. Um, that's to keep the block away from the um, anode. The block is the cathode, the, the pieces of metal of the anode and I've also added another anode over there, a couple of bits of scrap tube. Um, if you're doing this, this piece of metal that you use will become scrap. So um, remember that, it become more pitted and horrible. So, um, so yeah, I've got the, the block is obviously negative, these are positive and basically now the the block is discharging through those anodes um, in opposite corners. So, um, so there we go. That's it for today, guys. Today, there we go. You can you can see down there. Look, um, if I get the camera over there, you can see there's a lot of activity over there with a lot of scum developing. So uh, it's, it's a really good it's a really good thing. And the guy's name is Green Dot Three One Nine. So um, hopefully I'll get in touch with him. I'd love to have a chat with him because um, he's also into Toyota GT86s and I've got loads of parts for them. So um, there we go. So I'll see you tomorrow guys. Okay morning guys, it's uh, Saturday. Uh, I turned this off last night, it's had about two hours last night and it's had about two hours this morning and as you can see, just like yesterday we've got all the uh, the rusty bubbles on the surface where the oxidation is breaking down. Apparently the, um, the electric pulls the oxygen out of the, or the um, the act of the the electrolysis pulls the oxygen out of the iron where it's got the oxide, the, the rust, and the rust falls away. So you can see in the bottom here we've got um, quite a lot of rust building up already. So this has had a total of about three hours I guess. If you look there you can see quite a lot of sediment building up. So um, yeah I'll, I'll uh, pull this out today, I'll lift it up, 
get rid of the scum off the top and then uh, we can look at it again. Hi again guys, um, had a bit of a change of heart, it's Sunday now and here the, here the block is lifted up out of the, um, out of the solution and what I've done is drain the solution off because it was very very banky and um, I'm now trying these um, soda crystals and these come from Tesco's Tesco soda crystals and I've got this there's approximately 18 gallons in there I've worked out so I've put um, 20 tablespoonfuls in and let's just have a no go on out 20 tablespoonfuls in there so um, that's now a a nice solution there all stirred up so I'll get this um you can see the the way it's cleaning up and if you look down there I don't know if you can pick out that thread how it cleans the, how it's worked the salt but apparently this works a lot better um so let's see I mean you can see in here all the the galley plugs are all clean where they were and uh, also it's removed wherever there's any rust on the block the paint seems to be flaking away beautifully as well so I'm going to get this in there now I've not got another couple of anodes as well to try so um let's, uh, let's see how we go so here we go guys this is the um the tank after about an hour you can see I've now got four uh, anodes set up I've got a steel tube over here in this corner there's a steel tube over there the same steel tube over there and the plate here I'm using pieces of scrap metal because it does absolutely destroy the uh, the metal um, I'll show you here what it actually does here you go after just um, after a very short while in the uh, here we go you can see it there it's um it has pretty much dissolved I can't get it to focus it's pretty much dissolved the edges so um, yeah if you don't, don't use your favorite piece of steel that you plan to uh, plan to do some plating with because um, it just just destroys it uh, and you can see if you look down here where this piece of steel tube is see the dark area around it that's that's the deposits coming off of the steel tube so the steel deposits come off as black gunge and the actual rust comes off the block and floats on the surface but you can see now that it's quite different than using salt um, it's a it's a sort of foamy consistency on the top but less sort of bubbly than it, than it was with the salt um, probably less corrosive for the block as well but the bores haven't rusted at all remember we're removing rust here not adding it so uh, it seems to do quite a good job so I'll leave this now for another few hours and see where we go okay so here we go this is about 23 hours in here so uh, you can see it looks a lot different than it did with the salt the, you've got all the rust there but it's not all bubbling up and forming a mucky foam like the other one did like the salt did and also when you look here you can see that the brown has gone deeper down into the side of the tank um, whereas with the other one the, the tank remained fairly clear and all the rust came to the surface and we got our black blue deposits there on the bottom so let's uh, let's lift this up and have a look and see what it looks like just before I do the lifting a couple of health and safety things um, I know the world's gone health and safety mad but there are a couple of things here we need to consider with this this is producing hydrogen the bubbles on the surface are producing hydrogen so if you're doing this in an enclosed area like in a shed or something make sure you evacuate the area make sure you, you you're not in there for long um, and certainly don't go smoking or making anything with sparks because you'll get an explosion and the other thing is um, before you actually move anything or put your hands in there or do anything turn the battery charger off um, you don't want to go sort of shorting anything out and causing any sparks you know one you damage your battery charger two you could get a, an explosion or whatever and also something else I discovered the hard way with the salt I thought salt water would be absolutely fine um, it dries your skin out ridiculous it's um, my skin became like 1200 sandpaper so wear gloves all the time so that's just a couple of little pointers for you there what a surprise it's um it's quite incredible um, if we look here if you look inside these water jackets you can see instead of all that brown crusty mess it's now sort of becoming and you can see particularly around this around here you can see it's all clean and um, you know when it's good because it goes black uh, rather than the brown um, if you look in the hole where the water pump goes you can see there that the the rust is all just coming away and leaving the, the, the rusted but cast metal behind um, and it seems to be doing a great job. 
Um, the bores haven't rusted at all. Uh, there's that sediment in there, but that's just rusty deposits sat on it. That's not actually anything rusting in those um, in those tappet guides. Um, so yeah, looking at the end here, quite incredible. Um, up underneath, I'm not sure what we can see, but I certainly can't see up under there. So uh, yeah, it also um, cleans the exhaust ports as well, which uh, which I found quite amazing. All that was just flaking out. So yeah. Um, I think I'll give it another 24 hours and see what happens. It's certainly not damaging anything. Um, I don't want to go touching it because I don't want to get the stuff on my hands. But down in those holes in there, is, I can see lots of lumps and bits of rust and stuff all wanting to come out. So I guess leave it in there. Let the uh, let the chemicals do their work. You can see the paint is coming away here. Let me get someone to just give it a scrape. With. You can see the paint is coming away and it's leaving a, a nice sort of clean cast. What behind has even got a bit of them, um, even a bit shiny there. But yeah, you can see it's it's taken out all the rust around these around these core plug um, recesses. So that's nice. That'll have a nice um, nice seat to go back into. And uh, yeah, it's well worth doing, I think well worth doing and this is all down to green dot 319 that got me doing this so uh thank you mate and i'm yeah I've got, so i'm just pushing away just great lumps of rust just flaking away inside that would otherwise have been sort of cast there forever i don't know if i can show you here it looks like something there's ready to break away yeah it's um Having a good high pressure of washing there afterwards. Here we go, there's an edge there, that's going to break away. So you can see in there, I'll just touch that and it's gone. It's all just breaking off. So yeah, really, really good. Just hope I don't go through anywhere. <laughs> so, um, see you another 24 hours. Hello guys, here we are, 48 hours after the last video. So. We can see you know, there was a little bubble in that wasn't set up. Um, we can see it's still foaming, it's still rust on the surface. Water is now extremely dirty, lots of black in the bottom. So let's get out of the water and see what's like, what it's looking like. Here we go, guys. After a um, after a high pressure uh, wash, it's a lot cleaner. It's like the old paints come off. And I don't know if we can get that in there, but we can see that the uh, coolant galleries are now a lot cleaner. But we've still got some work to do on my foot here and if I go down there and start poking around I can still pull off chunks. So another tank to be mixed up going in again. Another 48 hours. And this is an example of the sort of rust you get. You can see how big the chunks are and you have to, some pieces are quite large and you have to break them up inside so they physically come out. But uh, luckily this block's got lots of holes in it, all the bolt holes for the head all go into the water jackets. and. And there's lots and lots of holes so uh, that's really good but um yeah it's worked really really well i'm really pleased with it if you look at the um the cylinders they haven't rusted um i'm not sure what you can see in there but they haven't rusted um we have to remember that this process is basically removing rust it doesn't cause it so so yeah it's a really good process so there we go back in the tank and all fizzing away i don't know if you can see that down there but it's all done fizzing away nicely so um yeah, let's get some more cleaning done. But um, I think this could take about another week, to be honest. So um, I think we'll call that a day there with this video. Um, but you can basically see the idea. And as I say, remember the health and safety. Don't go putting your hands in this stuff. Um, it's not very nice. Don't go drinking it. Don't go splashing it in your face. And uh, the other thing is, do not use stainless steel as an anode. Um, it produces a carcinogenic... Um, chemical so there you go guys so um thanks for watching i'll see you all soon bye bye